Welcome to the 20th season of the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our panel includes Neil Rudell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com. Between them, they've covered Penn State football for 70 years. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ Sports Director Alex Colley, and each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm, and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics. Doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee and Sons, your local food distributor. Go Penn State! By Allegheny Street Cigar. Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Lakeview Sheds and Vinyl in East Freedom. You can buy off our lot or we can customize your dream shed. By Shields Awards and the Sports Shop. We have a fantastic selection of awards, apparel, and memorabilia at great prices. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you can get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Welcome to the Nitwits Fiesta Bowl preview show for the next 30 minutes. We're going to be talking about the big December 30th matchup between the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Washington Huskies in the Fiesta Bowl. Now, to do that, we have Neil Riddell, the Altoona Mirror. Thank you, Alex. FightOnState.com's Mark Brennan. And the only one who actually stems from an actual Penn State team <laughs> that won a Fiesta Bowl, Jonas Stassi. That's right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming We've in. We've covered guys. a few Fiesta Bowls. Yeah, there yeah, you well, go. That's, that's true. true. That's true. Okay. And, you're, and, you, yeah, and right. you actually went to school in Arizona Out, yeah, State. So. Arizona State. So I'm from Very that nice. neck of the woods. So uh, we're going to jump right into this one. From a big picture standpoint, how big is this bowl game to really defining this 2017 team? Yeah, you know, not to be on the fence because I think there's so many moving parts right now with Penn State. Uh, you know, they're breaking a new offensive coordinator with Ricky Ronnie. You know, Barkley, uh, we'll get to this later, but, you know, how much of a workload are you going to have for him in this game? Uh, I think it's a really good opportunity in terms of a good opponent, a really good opponent that they get to play a great Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup. So in those things, I think it really helps you feel good through the season, through the off season, if you can win this game. Um, but I think there's so many other just intangibles that I'm not sure how you would attach the same significance if they were, say, an 85 team that everyone was coming back for 86 uh, sort of thing. So, uh, but a great opportunity game. Well, I think the important thing is, listen, you know, this team was one win away from possibly being in the playoff. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But for me, listen, if you're able to get to that 11 wins again, you know, that's, you're not taking a step back from what you were able to accomplish last year, even though you didn't get the Big Ten title. And, and listen, you know, they've lost a couple bowl games in a row now. Yeah. It would be really good to show that you're able to win one of these big bowl games. So, you know, these are big picture things. You know, is that going to really have a difference on how they're going to be next year? I'm not sure. Other than the fact that I think if you win the game, it's going to allow you to take a little bit of momentum into that late signing period and obviously spring practice. That always does, and it's good for the recruiting part. I mean, here, here we go again now with, uh, you know, bowls versus the playoff system and what everything means now. I mean, it's, uh, it, you know, I think we really are fortunate that we were able to get on the stage of a Fiesta Bowl as opposed to, say, I mean, even though the Cotton Bowl is great, and I know there's a lot of great bowls out there, but this one was a good one for us. Um, to me, this was one of my favorite trips is they do a great job out there, and I'm sure they still do the same thing. Uh, but again, we're, we're, we're in a situation where the playoffs mean everything and the bowl games just kind of happen. But this is important, in, in my opinion, it's important for the recruiting because of all the coaching changes and how things have been shuffled around and a lot of, a lot of things that have happened at Penn State in the last, you know, say, same month. But you're also going to have a lot of this recruiting because of the early period buttoned up before you kick the ball off. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's still things to do though afterward. The other thing I like th is the matchup. You know, I really do. You know, number one, you have a team that made the playoff last year. A lot of Penn State fans were complaining, and um, you know, I'm sure rightfully so, sure. that they felt they maybe deserved to be in the playoff more than some other teams. Maybe not specifically Washington, but now go out and, and prove it. And sure. I know it's not the same team, but there are a lot of the same cast of characters on both teams. And it's a traditional, traditionally a really good program. It's somebody you haven't seen all the time. I, you know, yeah. I, I, I really enjoy this. You know, just in looking at this, and I know we'll get into it. To me, it's it's going to be a fun matchup between two traditionally really good teams with a lot, you know, just tradition, history, all that stuff. Well, just look at the quarterback position. Yeah, you, know, you had Browning that was a Heisman uh, in the Heisman uh, conversation last year. McSorley should have been. Yeah. Uh, as well, so two veteran quarterbacks with uh, a lot of big play potential, some common opponents uh, these last couple of years as well. And from a coaching standpoint, uh, how do you like this match? Obviously, Chris Peterson, he knows a thing or two about winning in the Fiesta Bowl as well. Yeah, these are, to, to me, the, I mean, you know, you look at the coaching part. In, in bowl games, a lot of this long-term preparation comes down to really good coaching because, I mean, they have a lot of time to scout on an opponent, and you'll probably see some wrinkles. I know uh, Washington's a good team. They, he, he's coached well everywhere he's went. He's won everywhere he's went. And, uh, you know, this is, a, again, I, I agree. I wasn't taking – I'm not taking anything away from the bowl games. It's just it is good to have that matchup. We have that January – or the, the – um, not the January one, but the uh, New Year's Eve and uh, game. So uh, to me, this is this is going to be a great game, but a lot of coaching um, intangibles here with how they're going to go ahead and, and, and take this into the off season. Yeah. Well, also, you know, when when James Franklin has addressed the body of work, and he's usually been very good about next game, next game, and really hasn't doesn't give too much of a glimpse of a big picture uh, that often. But he has said about this season um, that the Michigan. Michigan State game was somewhat of a fluky type of situation because of what happened with the huge delay. He said a couple times, it was a mess up there, we all know it. Well now, this is a chance against a good team mm -hmm. to really add another signature win to that and sort of erase part of that Michigan State situation and the only thing you did was let Ohio State back in the game and that was painful and you learn from that hopefully going forward. But. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that that, uh, that helps uh, frame this game. You know what I enjoy, Neil, and, and you'll really appreciate this, is you know, the, the, the further you get away from Joe Paterno's career, the more you hear these Joe Paterno-isms. So James Franklin <laughs> talking about Peterson, how does he know him? Through the Nike trips, you know, oh, and I met his wife, and it's just yeah. Joe would always say, you know, I met him on the Nike trip, and so it's pretty cool that you know these guys obviously, yeah, I, they they they've hung out together, they know each other, they're too young, you know, really successful coaches who have done a good job, uh, so that part of it's going to be fun yeah. too. Well, plus he had some roots at Pitt too, I think. Uh, Peterson, Peterson was on Pitt. Uh, uh, yeah. Coach. Yep. 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 All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break here, but when we return, we're going to talk a lot about those Penn State coaching changes. The Nitwits will be right back. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. We now return to the Nitwits. A roundtable discussion of Penn State football. Welcome back. Penn State has hosted their on-campus Bowl Media Day, which gave us our first chance to hear from offensive coordinator Ricky Ronnie. Gentlemen, how important is this debut game on a big stage, and what are you expecting to see from him? Well, he cried before the game. Can you imagine if they win how emotional he's going to be? Mark <laughs> yeah. asked him a question, and uh, it's nice to see how much it means to him. Yeah, I mean, he got for people who, who haven't seen it, I asked him, have you had 10 minutes to step back and – really reflect on getting this position because they had been on the road recruiting and he talked about you know when he had a chance to talk to his mom and his mother-in-law who lives in Pittsburgh kind of how proud they were of him and keeping the kids close to the mother-in-law in Pittsburgh you know it was pretty cool for me to see I'm not that I like to see people cry but he was crying in a positive way about how much it meant to him and uh, I it, again as Neil said it just shows how much that job really means to him and I 
you don't see the human side of people that often in our job, and I thought that was pretty cool and pretty telling. Yeah, I, to, I mean, I, I totally agree. I mean, you know, as fans, everyone looks at, at these guys as these figures as opposed to human beings, and, you know, there are a lot of emotion there, and, and, and it's good. I mean, I, I, I give a lot of credit to James. I mean, and, and he hasn't made a mistake yet in how he's gone about it. And, I mean, I, I always – I've been a, a James Franklin guy because – you know, he's exactly what I feel we need here at the university and um, you know, just doing a good job with the hires, people he's had to let go. Um, and he, it's always been for the good of the program. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really interested to see what he's going to do with this offense, how he's going to, you know, um, what he's going to use in it, how he's going to use certain guys. And I know there's been some talk on how he's going to use maybe Stevens and some things like that. But, um, you know, I, I think, again, I think it's a good hire. And I know you referenced it before, you know, a really intelligent guy. He went uh, Ivy League, Ivy League guy uh, with, with Rainey's Ivy League guy. And I'll be, uh, I think it's a good hire. Again, we don't know because, you know, Joe set the bar so high. But again, when Joe came in, not a lot of us really knew a, a, a lot about him either. So uh, this will be interesting to see where he goes with this. Really important for staff continuity. And I think that's where probably some of the emotion comes out because if, if he's not the choice, then the message is sent to him that, hey, you know, you have another year here as the tight ends coach, and then maybe you are looking somewhere. And then the staff continuity uh, is a lot different. You've lost Moorhead. You've lost Huff. Uh, if, if, if you start turning over, you almost could have lost Pry at some point here. Uh-huh. Uh, but I also think that once you become the coordinator, like James at, front, at Kansas State, right. in a lot of ways, that's where your professional career really leaps because now you're on a track if you do a good job to become in the conversation with a head coach at some point down the road not necessarily here but somewhere yeah ricky was the interim guy uh back before they hired and when they hired joe moorhead and he had he's able to spend two years he was up in the box he was the guy who was communicating with everybody to me this is an obvious you know duh that they are committing to the offense that joe moorhead installed Mm -hmm. and going in that direction and joe you're a guy who you play football Mm -hmm. you coach the high school level Mm -hmm. how important is it that once you commit to a system Mm -hmm. you know it's going to be there you know for in terms of recruiting in terms of what you're doing going forward rather than having to make some dramatic change at this point sure yeah i mean i think what they'll do is 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 he'll bring in use the verbiage that's already in place maybe put some wrinkles in there it'll change i'm sure they're going to change you know signs up and how they play call they may do something a little bit different but for the guys that are there they're going to want to keep a lot of that is very similar so that they can, you know, understand it and, and move forward and not have to take and get a whole new playbook. Um, I would assume that he's going to use a lot of what is what Joe has done and put his, put his own spin on it. Well, you know, I learned a lot of my football from a guy named Joe, and I'm not apologizing for it. But I've also <laughs> Joe learned, I've learned <laughs> right. from Joe Nastassi, yeah, too, and that, he Neil. uses the terms thumper, downhill, road grader. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah and, that's, and Ricky Ronnie okay. made it clear, because we asked him, it will be no fullback. They're not going under center. And Neil um, still likes him. Well, yeah, I'm still going to give him a chance, but I would like to see an occasional package where – when you really needed a quarterback sneak, when you needed to make a tough yard, you can do it. That's, it yeah, you know, I mean, I go back and forth with this because I've sat in rooms with, with coaches with both schools of thoughts on, you know, the under center versus, you know, we, we add a man up whenever we don't have a guy under center. You know, we add a, uh, add a running back. Um, I go back and forth with it. I mean, I think that with the correct personnel, I still think you can basically run – other than a quick quarterback sneak, I think you can run everything you could run basically out of an eye. Um, you just have to have the right personnel for it. So, I mean, you still can run the power game. I, don't th- I think we did a little bit more later, but we didn't do as much early in those middle couple of games there. Quickly, you guys have talked about continuity. How key was it to keep Pry and then also have Phil Galliano, who was a consultant with the team, now special teams coordinator? Well, for me, keeping Brett Pry, that, that allows you to not lose all three of your coordinators, number one. And number two, he's obviously done a good job. Uh, I, I don't know how good that Louisiana Lafayette job would have been for him. Neil and I have argued about this a little bit. Uh, so ultimately, I think he's in a good spot. He's going to be a head coach at some point. There's no doubt about it. Just talking to the guy, you, you, can, you can see that. Uh, but I, this isn't the year 
I think he's going to have better opportunities moving forward. Yeah, it's important for them. He's the number one confident for James. He's from Altoona. He had to stay another year. He's been good to Altoona, and we appreciate that. But, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the offensive coaches are the ones that move up, other than Tennessee, which was on their 12th choice. Um, so you just don't know when a defensive coordinator is going to get, uh, you know, some sort of a group five or – uh, are you going to be able to move up to a power five? You don't know that. Just real quick, though, I think you know how important. <clears throat> I think about how important it is for the for James to be able to keep this together for recruiting purposes. I mean, if you would lose everybody, those recruits have to be in love with Penn State University and James Franklin because the next day, you know, the guy that you really liked that came and sat in your in, in your living room may not be there. So, you know, he may be at a, school, a neighboring school. So, very important that James stays so in, in, in touch, and he does, and he's doing a great job. It doesn't look like it's affected us in the recruiting right, as of right now. Yeah, and Alex, we'll, I know we're tight on time, but Phil Galliano, the, the, the key for me there is you're going to have a guy who's primary job is special teams coordinator. I, I like that. Uh, you know, we saw him at practice the other day, and you could already see he's at his, his formation charts there. And to have somebody whose primary focus is special teams, as important as we've seen special teams become over the years, I like that they were able to do that. All right, more with the X's and O's of the Nitwits, or the Nitty Lions, when the Nitwits returns. The Nitwits are brought to you by Monarch Cleaners for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics. Doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee & Sons, your local food distributor. Go Penn State! By Allegheny Street Cigar. Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. We now return to the Nitwits. A roundtable discussion of Penn State football. Well, the last time we saw a Ricky Ronnie as the OC in a bowl game, we saw a passing of the baton from Christian Hackenberg to Trace McSorley. Do you see a similar scenario playing out with Saquon Barkley and Miles Sanders, or do we expect this to be a Barkley show? Well, it was. Uh, we had a little prelude at media day. We didn't get Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and which I'm not criticizing because he's obviously been on the whole circuit, but we did get a good dose of Miles Sanders. I'm kind of curious beyond the media part of it is how much are they going to use Barkley? He, they got one more game to get him where everybody wants to see him get there healthy. Uh, will he be the kickoff return guy? I, I would say still I hope not. I, I want to see him get through this game healthy. Um, but I wanted to see Penn State win the game, too. So well, we'll you, you, what, you, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> Why is going to give you the best <laughs> You want it both ways. No, I, I, I want to see as much Saquon Barkley as we could see. If this is his last college game, this guy is a special, special player. Mm -hmm. And I want to see as much. With all due respect to Miles Sanders, we'll have all next year, the next two years, to see a lot of him. He's a really good young back. But give me as much Saquon Barkley as, as you want to get out there. Not to the point where he's playing tired and could be injured. But no, you absolutely do not cut back. You need this guy to win this game against a very good defense. Use right. him in all the different ways that you possibly can. I, I, would, I would guess we're going to see the exact same. Well, I don't mean the exact same. We're going to see him in the same capacity, I think, that we've seen him all year. Um, I also... One of the things I really like about bowl games is the fact that they go out there and they kind of let it all out. So you're going to, I would guess, you know, both, both, both teams are going to show things they haven't shown all year or do some things. And I think that's the fun of, the, of, of this uh, t uh, kind, um, time of the year when you have these bowl games. You know, you see trick plays and different guys doing different things and different formations. So it'll be a lot of fun for a Penn State fan to sit there and watch that because everyone's interested to say, what what is Ricky going to go out here and do with this offense? Let's see what's going to happen. Who's he going to use? How's he going to use them? So it'll be a lot of fun, and I would assume we're going to see Barkley in the same capacity. Neil, poor Ricky Ronnie. Neil wants to take his best weapon away <laughs> in his uh, in his, no, in his I, debut. I just would be surprised if you saw the same workload that you saw against Iowa. I, 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 don't, I don't think I, I, think I would. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if you'll quite see that. I think that was out of just sheer need and we needed it. I mean, I don't think there was a choice there. Well, one thing we know we're going to see according to the depth chart is the lion position for Tommy Stevens. What are we expecting to see from that? 
Well, speaking of guys who weren't at media day, I found it kind of interesting <laughs> that they create a new position for the guy and he doesn't show up. But regardless, <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to be critical about that. Listen, I think if you gave this coaching staff and Joe Moorhead a truth serum and said, if you, do, if you ever regret from the season, what would it be? And I would bet you it would be that they didn't use Tommy Stevens more on offense against Ohio State and Michigan State. I get that there were times when you put him in that you took a sickie off, but this guy has become such a weapon. It's nice to see them giving a little bit of a nod to him about what a special player he is. And they're talking about doing all sorts of different yeah. things with him moving forward. I j I'm sorry, Neil. No, go. go. Uh, yeah. I just, th this is a guy I've always really liked on this, on this club. And, and, and to me, how do you keep a guy like this here when, you know, he's a true quarterback and a really good quarterback and could start at a lot of places? They have to get them in, and I, I'm, I'm excited to see if they're talking about using them a lot more. I'm all for it because the guy's unbelievable. I, I think he's one of the best athletes we have in the whole team. Yeah, and let's face it, they're doing everything they can to encourage him. I mean, yeah. McSorley has another year left. Uh, they want to be able to show Tommy Stevens, you know, not even waiting till the spring to show him. Saying them now, hey, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna create a new uh, you know package for you, and I, I think that that part of it is uh, is pretty smart. And quickly, Manny Bowen out for this bowl game, missed the Rose Bowl last year. What are your thoughts on his situation? Is he still on the team? I mean, we really don't know. Uh, James he's on the is roster. On, he's on the roster. Guys have left is the program who are no longer on the roster. I would say this. I would be absolutely shocked if Manny Bowen's back at Penn State next year. Yeah. I just, you know, you, you have so many issues that sooner or later. But for now, he's on the roster. James said he's not playing in the bowl game. Yeah, I, I just wonder, you know, he, he's kind of been a week-to-week uh, confirmation or yay nay on him. He's ended the last two years on suspension. It's a shame. He's really um, it hasn't been able to capitalize on on the wonderful opportunity. Good player. He yeah. Is, is is Brown playing in his place? Cam Brown. No, uh, it's uh, Smith. Brandon okay. Smith yeah. has been the guy who's gotcha. getting those snaps. Okay. All right. We're going to take our final time out. When we return, it's prediction time. We'll be right back. The Nitwits are brought to you by Lakeview Sheds and Vinyl in East Freedom. You can buy off our lot or we can customize your dream shed. By Shields Awards and the Sports Shop. We have a fantastic selection of awards, apparel, and memorabilia at great prices. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you can get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Prediction time, gentlemen. How do you see the Fiesta Bowl shaking out? Uh, well, I think Brennan made a, a, a good point where he said that uh, they've lost two in a row <laughs> in bowl games. So there's motivation there, and McSorley's always responded well to that type. I'll say Penn State 30, Washington 27. I'll go Penn State 28, Washington 24. Two good defensive teams. I think Penn State's offense is going to play well under Ricky Ronnie, and I think 28 points will actually be good against this defense. Yeah, I'm going to go with what's close again. Uh, I'm going to say 31, 28, Penn State. All right. You're squeezing me. I didn't have a choice there. It's got to be. It's going to be around in there somewhere. I mean, I, I wasn't sure what to do. And I'm going Penn State 38, Washington 24. We're going to find out who's right on our post Fiesta Bowl wrap show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Thank you. We'll see you then. Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm, and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics. Doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee and Sons, your local food distributor. Go Penn State! By Allegheny Street Cigar. Allegheny Street Cigar, Blair County's only cigar lounge. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. 
by Lakeview Sheds and Vinyl in East Freedom. You can buy off our lot or we can customize your dream shed. By Shields Awards and the Sports Shop, we have a fantastic selection of awards, apparel, and memorabilia at great prices. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you can get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.